painting by Titian from about 1510 to 1520, which is titled, very descriptively, Portrait of a Man. And this is sometimes referred to as portrait of a man with a quilted sleeve or portrait of a man with a blue sleeve, all sorts of things. But nowhere does it give a name for who the sitter is. And when you look at this, you can see why those different titles have come along. Because the largest area of the painting, which is bombastically jumping out at you, is that sleeve. The sleeve is really in your face. And he's even shoving it in your face because you see the man is posed with his elbow sticking out towards us. And he's actually breaking the frame in a way because because there's this little ledge that his right arm is resting on, and the sleeve overflows that ledge, and it can't be contained. If you think about, so this is 1510 to 20, so we're smack in the middle of the Renaissance, and we're in Italy, and Titian is painting in Venice, and what you see here is a man who doesn't necessarily have obvious trappings that tell you who he is, but he certainly has things that obviously tell you his position in society. And that sleeve really does that. It's very expensive looking material. Mm, definitely the quality of the material. And you can see that the skill he has with the brushstrokes, that you, you really cannot see his brushstrokes on the picture, but you are totally sort of drawn into the realistic quality and the shine of that silky kind of padded quilted sleeve. And also you see it again on the black clay that's mm. draping around the side. It also has that again shimmering light quality to it. And and you have the bright white bit of his shirt that's underneath and you see all of the little folds and creases in the shirt and this tiny little thin gold chain that disappears. I mean, you're certainly getting status symbols. And it's extremely crisp, the focus on, the, on that, again, on that white bit around his neck and the chain, which contrasts quite strongly with the sort of smoky, sfumato way he's treated his hair and his beard, which seems to almost blend into that background. Then the face really pops back out at you, yeah. that the hair and the beard kind of act as a frame in a way for the face, where they blend into the background, and we don't really know where this is, but that allows the man's face to pop out, and he's not quite turned in profile. He's sort of three quarters turned, so you do get a view of most of his face. And his eye, one is extremely crisp and focused and looking right out at you, and the other one is sort of blending back in that shadow on the other side of his face, which again adds to that three dimensional dimensionality, that realism, that contrast of focus and smoky hues in the background are really helping bring this out and make it a lot more alive. And of course that was something that was really important to the Italian Renaissance ideals in general, was the idea of focusing on the little details that would allow you to depict a person the way he actually looked. This idea of the importance of the human and ideas about humanism and focusing on life on earth and the life of the mind, not just about achieving some heavenly reward later on. So this is not really a religious painting, it's just a painting of a man. But it's quite so sort of psychological in a way because we're getting his wealth from the sleeve but in the background we don't know where he is we don't know where his setting is there's nothing in the background in that grey wall that he's standing against that's showing us anything about his power and his display but so we're drawn in by the sleeve but also by his eye to his psychology to, and the way he's posed the way, the way he's holding himself gives us an idea a bit of status and how he feels about himself this is a painting that really does come alive when you look at it in person to me because his face is much more engaging than seeing reproductions of this image. There is a sense of psychology and it looks like he has thoughts about what he's looking at and what he's looking at is us. I mean, he looks out pretty directly at the viewer. His face sort of shifts for me. Sometimes he looks inviting, like he's got a smile on his face and other times I can look at him and I see that kind of shadow coming out the corner of his nose as a bit of a sneer and a condescending look at me. Exactly, and I think either way you do get this feeling that he's forming some sort of judgment about the viewer that he's looking at and whether that's a positive one or a negative one is a little bit up in the air but that in of itself the fact that you don't know what he's thinking makes you want to look and think about it all the more.